What's up everybody? Welcome to the channel. Today we're going to be analyzing tournament fight scenes from the classic martial arts movie Karate Kid. If you are unfamiliar with me, I am a six-time pro kickboxing world champion with a fourth degree black belt, currently signed with Karate Combat. I think I'm the perfect person to take a look at these fight scenes and analyze how realistic they are, what techniques work, what ones are ridiculous, and I want to make a little comparison between the tournament footage in Karate Kid and the tournament footage in Cobra Kai because there is a big disparity in the reality of these fight scenes. So here we go. We're going to have some fun today. Karate Kid has been one of my favorite martial arts movies throughout my entire life. I probably started watching it when I don't even know, 10 years old or something like that. And I'd say every year or two, I just turn it back on, watch it again. And one of the massive things that I always appreciate about this film is the fact that they brought in good martial artists to portray the guys in the tournaments. They're not mediocre athletes who just make this beautiful sport look awful. There's actually some very skilled people in this movie. And we're gonna look at each of these fight scenes. I'm gonna tell you how realistic they are and if this is actually something that martial artists may actually use in a fight or in a tournament. We see one of the Cobra Kai students execute a jumping, spinning sidekick. This is a fancy technique, but one that actually works. And if you're not familiar with a sidekick, it is one of the most powerful techniques you can possibly throw. Jumping in the air surprisingly does not pull away from that power that much. It's just a matter of whether you move slightly forward or whether you move backwards as you execute that jump. Standing in place, going straight up, usually doesn't work because your opponent will just move. <laughs> So we see Johnny catch, go for a low kick, I think, or something like that. He comes over top and then lands the round kick to the head, all while holding the limb. Anybody who does martial arts will tell you catching punches, it's very, very difficult to do. You see in movies sometimes people throw punches and the guys just catch their fist and just look at them. It's not going to happen unless your hand is so much bigger than the other person's and the other person cannot punch with any force. The reason this is so difficult to do is most people when they throw their shot, they don't leave it out there. They throw and they pull it back quickly. So the reaction time to actually block a shot and grab, it's so small that it's not realistic. So when you see something like this, yes, it looks cool. No, it's not gonna work. Here we see Daniel execute a defensive front kick. That's when your opponent is attacking you, you stand your ground and you throw out that lead leg front kick. This is a very practical kick to utilize, one that can actually cause a lot of damage and the fight footage we just saw is absolutely realistic. The scene we just saw, the guy in the white gi is actually very skilled. He's one of the people when I watch this, I go, whoo, this guy is really good. But what they had him do here is not 100% great. Generally when a round kick comes, you don't slip under it. There's a number of reasons for that, but the main one being if you misjudge or you miscalculate the height, you might actually move right into the round kick. So if the kick's coming this way and I decide to step under and rotate, it becomes very dangerous. In addition, he then does a spinning side kick, but he drops his weight right to the floor. Why is this not practical? Well, once he hits the floor, you're basically just putting your leg out and the other guy's gonna have to run into it. You're much better staying on your feet for this spinning side kick. Next up, we see Daniel do a block into a counter cross. Now, yes, this is something that you will see in many tournaments, people reaching out, leaving that space between their head and then throwing the counter. The reason I don't like this little clip here is because Daniel is using his forearm to block the round kick. If he was blocking a back fist or a punch, I'd go, oh, okay, that works. But blocking a round kick with the little forearm bone against a shin bone, if the person was a Muay Thai fighter and they threw into there, they might actually break your arm. 
So generally that's why we keep everything tight and we double up on the blocking arm. So generally that's why we keep everything tight and we double up on the arms when we're blocking big, powerful round kicks. That's funny. Just as I mentioned in the last clip, you don't block like this, you double up. Then the guy who I was saying actually looks like he knows some martial arts. He double arm blocks the round kick and then executes a very nice jumping, spinning side kick, which we already mentioned works very well, especially when somebody's walking right into you and their own force is going to increase the kicking power. Right there we saw a double leg sweep. One leg high comes to the torso, the other leg goes low behind the knees and you sweep them out. If you would have told me this was an effective technique, I would have rolled my eyes and shook my head. But actually I was doing some training with Josh Johnsey, who is another very high level kickboxer within Canada, and he landed this sweep on me. Now, I didn't stay in place and take the back fist because as soon as he took me down, I scrambled back to my feet. So in terms of actually taking somebody down and being able to launch an assault or an attack on them, I don't know how realistic that is. But if you catch the person in the right position, yes, I suppose this can be effective. In one of the last clips, I mentioned you do not block round kicks with a single arm and come back with the counter cross. But now we see block the back fist. Now it's forearm versus forearm. As the other guy extends his arm out, his torso is exposed. So you come back with the counter punch. Absolutely a real thing. One of which I utilize very often when I used to compete in point fighting, which was kind of like what we're watching today, except with little gloves on. Executing sideways movement is very important, very relevant in martial arts. We see Daniel move off to the side and then execute a round kick. What's not realistic here is how aggressive his opponent is. Usually when somebody moves forward and the opponent moves to the side, you'll stop. You'll stop your forwards movement. You will not continue forward to an opponent that is no longer there. In this clip, I go, ah, oh, it's not very realistic because his opponent would have gone, oh, Daniel moved, now I'm gonna turn an angle, not continue through right into the round kick, so not super realistic. That last clip between Johnny and the martial artist, the black belt there, who is very high skill level, I like that. Everything about that one was fairly realistic. You know, the final shot obviously missed, didn't come close, but everything was fairly on point. That is one of the reasons that I like Karate Kid and the tournament scenes versus Cobra Kai's tournament scenes. They get a little ridiculous and they're not realistic, but much of what we see in Karate Kid is quite on point. That was kind of a funny scene. Tornado kicks, they do work. They're not something that you're gonna throw that often. They take a lot of energy. And by the time you do a spin and you come into your round kick midair, why not just throw one on your feet? To triple up is very unrealistic. And then to move forward, jump in the air and throw a spinning hook kick and to take a round kick at the same time, that's not very realistic, but still fun to watch. And we get to the final match between Daniel and Johnny, and here we actually see some decent fight scenes. Johnny putting the pressure on Daniel, Daniel backing up, backing up, backing up, and then eventually landing a nice clean cross to the body. That scene right there was a little ridiculous in my opinion. Yes, when somebody throws a round kick, they're compromised on this leg, and I suppose if you can shoot your legs out, go one high, one low, and collapse, Sure, you can take him to the ground, but remember the reality is, just like when we talked about punches before, people don't leave them hanging out there. You don't leave your round kick out, you throw it, you draw it back. So that standing leg would not be as compromised or as exposed as they made it seem in the movie. Very difficult technique to actually land, which means it's not super realistic. Right there in the middle of the final battle between Johnny and Daniel, we see Johnny utilize sort of a, a flip up. This is something that I can actually do. I love coming into my kids class and trying to teach this little technique, this little stand up technique to them. Not many people can get it, but it's a very funny thing to utilize because it takes a decent amount of energy because you're exploding off the floor 
but all it does is get you onto your feet. There are far more practical ways to get up. They're just not as fancy as this little shoot up in the air, which is why we see it so often in Hollywood. And the final technique that I wanna talk about today is obviously the crane kick. Now this technique is something that actually is utilized very, very heavily in Muay Thai. And instead of calling it a crane kick, we just call it a scissor front kick. Why is the scissor front kick more effective than the crane kick? Well, you're not coming up and standing here where people obviously know what you're gonna do because when you're on one foot, you can only do so many things and you're not gonna run straight in. The scissor front kick, however, can be done from a far distance when you attack your opponent. You close the distance. In Karate Kid, Johnny rushes Daniel while he's obviously in this position, which is just a terrible idea to attack somebody right then. So the crane kick, not very practical. Scissor front kick, absolutely practical. But this scene overall is something that should never go down, but is iconic in the martial arts film movie industry and is just so fun to teach people. And the last thing I want to touch on before we wrap it up today is hopefully you recognize that I'm fairly happy with the fight footage which comes out of Karate Kid. It is pretty realistic. Obviously there are a few little issues I have but overall thumbs up. When we look at Cobra Kai and we see some of the fight scenes I'm going oh they're very unrealistic and in addition the actors they bring in to do the fight scenes, their skill level is not as high as the extras, which we saw in Karate Kid. Plus, sometimes they're just trying techniques or doing techniques that would never work. At least in Karate Kid, these things would actually work, even though there's a low probability of them actually being executed, being able to pull them off. But in Cobra Kai, that's the one part I don't love about that show. Aside from that, I'm very happy to watch it. You know, season five is just coming out and I'm gonna be watching that, of course, but Karate Kid, in my opinion, did a better job with the fight scenes, more realistic, and that's what I want as a martial artist. I don't wanna see things which I can't do. I want the real techniques and then with a story developed around it. That's all. That's a good movie, in my opinion. I hope you guys enjoyed this breakdown of the tournament fight scenes in Karate Kid. If you did, please give the video a like. If you haven't already, join the channel and get subscribed. Keep in mind, I don't just do analysis of movies. This is just a little side thing for fun. I do tutorials, workouts, breakdown of other fighters. There's so much content here. You will absolutely love the channel, so I suggest you stick around. Everybody who's been here before, hope you enjoyed this. As always, train hard, and I will see you back here soon for another episode.